Welcome back, amigos, to another episode of the podcast. Today, I got my guest, as you can see in front of me. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, my name is Diana. Hi, Diana. And (laughs) (laughs) it's actually my first time doing um, podcasts, so. Oh, no problem. Yeah. It's it's really easy. All you do is talk, and yeah, the closer I talk to someone, like about experiences and stuff, are like the dates and my therapist. Oh, so. okay, <laughs> very nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad to have you. It has been quite a journey to get you on this thing. I know, probably it... the hardest guest I've tried to get. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like a flaking here. There's like uh-huh. I can't do it, and then um, about two years. I think, since we started talking about it. Yeah, I met you during the pandemic. Pandemic, yeah. yeah. 2020. Yeah. So. Long, yeah. And we've never met till right now. I know. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> I know, right? And yeah. it's um, directly straight to this. So, <laughs> yeah. It's very cool. I was like, and I gave up. I was like, you know what? She, I'm done mm. trying to ask. Mm-hmm. She's doing her thing, she's got things going on. Mm. And then I was like, well, I was getting one more time, uh-huh. one more time. Uh-huh. And then I texted you the other day, hey. And you're like, yeah, okay, let's do the podcast. I didn't even mention the podcast. Right. You're like, just, oh, let's grab coffee. Yeah. Cause I wanted to like meet you and like hear yeah. your story. Cause you have, that's why we're here. Mm-hmm. And you're like, let's just do the podcast. Yeah. I was like, damn, all right, let's do it. I know. I mean, like, I've been really wanted to yeah? do the podcast anyway. And it's like, I, I would love, you know to do that with you and i know we had talked about it so many times so yeah well you're here now yeah. i appreciate it Thank and i you. like i kind of like say oh no to coffee because i'm off sugar <laughs> are you are you going uh keto yeah and it's crazy because i did it before mm-hmm. but i i never had it to the point where it was really hard yeah until now so right now it's been really like a lot of headache and I'm having that keto breath that I hate so much. Oh, the, the steak <laughs> so like, breath? Yeah. And yeah. you need to balance like vegetables and stuff. I did, I did not know that. Yeah. You know, and now I'm like, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> I did not really. I mean, I know that most of the things that causes that is like not eating. Mm-hmm. So before I just eat, then I'm fine. Yeah. Now, like, you can't eat in 12 hours. Oh, so you're doing probably intermittent fasting yeah, on so top I'm of it? Yeah, so I'm doing keto and intermittent. So I can only eat from, I mean, I can only eat on 12 noon and then 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And it's been two weeks. How do you feel? I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm still alive, food. Right. I'm here, food. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it could be tough because I, I, I'm like in a keto. I go back and forth like keto paleo because, mm-hmm. you know, I'll do really good for keto for a while. And then it's like, man, I miss rice. Like I love mm. white rice and sometimes um, certain vegetable, not vegetables, but fruits. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I got to have. And so I don't, I used to hold myself back, but then I was like, all right, I'll have a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, I can't, I can't deprive myself of all things delicious, you know? That's my plan too. It's like, as soon as I get to my target weight, then I'm going to have to start to have rice again, most especially the sweet rice. I had, um, the basmati rice and that rice sucks. It's very dry, kind of tasting you know mm. those japanese rice they're like very sweet yeah they're sticky like sticky mm-hmm. yeah um this rice is just mm, it's just very dry and you're like this is not even the rice i'm used to eat oh my and it's crazy because filipinos yeah. we eat rice breakfast lunch and dinner, dinner yeah and snacks and everything and then my family yeah. stay fit for some reason <laughs> yeah and um I think I'm guessing it's like the lifestyle there is so different from here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for folks that don't know, Diana. Diana or Diane? Diana. Diana. Sorry. Every time I have a guest, I ruin their name. You're fine. That's horrible. <laughs> Should really be a better host. And it's like, do you can't even get my name right? Uh, okay. So Diana is from the Philippines, mm-hmm. correct? Yes. Uh, what part of the Philippines? I grew up in um, 
for Lomelok, it's actually the my nearest city was General Santa City. So oh. if the people know Mani Pacquiao, we're yeah. kind of like in the same area. Like, okay. You know, grew up right there. They're just near the coast. I am by the forest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Like, What's it growing up out there? It's... Is it pretty wild? It's crazy. Like yeah. a lot of people would not even, you know, a lot of people here would freak out if they say the way I grow up. Probably. Yeah. And I saw that episode of you and your brother, right? Like oh, when God. he went down to South America, I think. And then Ooh, there's no del- electricity right there and stuff oh, like that, like on his um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mission. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, he went to his mission in Ecuador and mm-hmm. he was just telling me that I was sleeping on the dirt, mm-hmm. you know, like no electrics, no running water. Yeah. 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 I was like, damn, dog, I would die. <laughs> That's pretty much uh, my childhood, really. I grew up into a family that did not really provide us with so much material things because my parents decided to, you know what? Let's raise our children in the most remote part of the country. <sighs> so, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I end up growing up into. No running water, uh-huh. no floor, no electricity, and we cook our food by firewood. So mm. it's pretty much like camping, yeah. but full time. Yeah. So <laughs> wow. It was not easy. No. Um. Yeah, but I never really regretted. I mean, like not regretted, but I never really hated them for that or something or you know. I yeah. never took it as a negative part right. of me because because of that, um, every step up of my life had been appreciated. Like, mm. you know, if, if I felt like I'm depressed today, I just need to close my eyes and remember those times where we were making charcoal for nothing just yeah. to be able to afford rice and just rice, you know? Mm. And right now, like, luckily... <sighs> Ever since I got here in the U.S., I never really starve yeah. and stuff. So, Yeah, I have um, a lot of friends from the Philippines because I worked in, I've been in the medical field forever, it seems like, yeah. over 10 years now. Yeah. And the first portion of my medical was uh, mostly the ladies that worked in the lab were from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you guys don't ever want to, like, go back and, you know, it's like, Rus- Russell, you have no idea. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're just kind of ignorant to it. And I was, mm-hmm. and then I dated a girl from the Philippines at one point and she showed me like her house she lived in, how they took a shower, mm-hmm. with, like a bucket, like the bucket in yeah. <laughs> and the, the hose. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, most, there is no like toilet. Mm-hmm. That's not such a thing. And, you know, you would, I think if I, I could be wrong, you take a rag and, you know clean up around there or you spray some water and clean up yeah it's kind of like (laughs) so here's what um in the farm setup actually they we dig a hole uh right and then we put like a slab of wood around it and then there's just this little hole okay so like a squat toilet right like, like the one that you can find in the um in the camping sites and stuff right right and then you bring a water and soap so when you're done, you just wash yourself. Oh. So, yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do well. <laughs> uh. And this is actually um, a lot of Middle Eastern and Indian. They yeah. do the same way when mm-hmm. they clean themselves. And that's why when they eat, they cannot use their right hand. They right. can only use their left hand because they use their hand by washing their... Yeah. Hand. Yeah. In India, I know they uh squat toilet like is the thing out there Mm -hmm. i guess if you have a like actual toilet to sit on like we do Mm -hmm. it's like dude you're a baller yeah Yeah. you're 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 doing well yeah (laughs) Yeah. over a toilet it's Mm -hmm. insane huh we're here it's like we don't have a toilet you know (laughs) all the toilet we can't go in the restroom right now you're cleaning it right yeah like yeah (laughs) a lot of people don't even clean their toilet here Mm -mm. so um i mean it's probably going to be hard for those people most especially if you don't have burning water like the yeah. plumbing and everything so so yeah. when so when you guys were out there 
growing up, did you guys have any like neighbors around or you guys like mm-hmm. tucked um, away? I grew up with um, the tribe called Blaan. Uh-huh. They are the native tribe back in that, I mean, in the community. And yeah, it was just like, like very primitive and stuff. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so growing up, you guys pretty much are like hunter and gatherers is that safe to say you guys Uh, go get food gather things sell product i don't know this is me completely yeah shooting from the hip i'm not sure i wish i've seen that you know because during the period of my grandparents that was the thing okay right but the philippines the problem in the philippines we do not introduce contraceptives we do not introduce anything that would reduce the population a little oh. bit so most of the tribe they would have 14 wives Whew. right and okay. those 14 wives would have so many children by the end of it it's like those children needs to hunt the thing is in the philippines we harvest forests and we harvest wildlife mm. and this is why i care so much about you know, the forest here in America, as you can see, I'm really big on outdoors and I do my mm-hmm. YouTube on outdoor thing because it's it's like I grow up into a forest that is dead. You know, there is trees, mm-hmm. but I call it, it's dead because the people harvested every living thing mm. in, in that forest and nothing is left. Dang. And it's sad. So it's kind of like a um, cleared out pasture. Mm. Just, just yeah. wide open it's not wide open like there's still the trees the thing is too is that like we keep harvesting the trees because my town is the biggest um pineapple plantation gotcha actually so dole philippines is near that area oh. so the pineapple from dole is being harvested from that particular place and then what they do is they would clear off land so that they can um plant pineapple mm. and in exchange of that we do deforestation so dang mm-hmm. did you ever work at the uh, pineapple place no i did not really uh. like i i was so lazy when i was growing up uh. like I, I am this sickly kid right yeah. i am the eldest there's <laughs> six, six five 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 yeah and you're the fifth and no, i'm the eldest o- oldest, so the, the oldest oldest of five yeah okay good yeah so it's like I'm I'm sickly, so I kind of like harness that in my own advantage kind of thing. Uh-huh. So this is why like when I help my parents now, I'm like I don't really complain. Yeah. <laughs> because um during growing up, my brother, he's five years younger than me, but he pretty much helped my parents doing farming. He's the one who would fetch water for me to have something so I can bathe uh-huh. and stuff like that. So he was like the muscle. Gotcha. Like, you know, but I like every time they ask me like, okay, it's time to harvest tomatoes. Um, you know, always say I'm sick. Uh, <laughs> and I would typical end up, kid. right? Oh, feel good, <laughs> yeah. Dad. Uh-huh. Oh boy, I don't feel good at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I always do that, and like that's that was my escape. And then what I would actually end up doing was just cutting cardboard and stuff like that, and would paste, and would make this little towns and stuff you know because in the farm we cannot really afford toys Ah. so you need to be very creative you know if you want something like a figurine you need to mold it and that's where i develop you know that talent of art Ah. like drawing i can do um sculptures and stuff like that because of my childhood (laughs) so was there like so say here here's your house Mm -hmm. where you guys live is there like a local, I guess to say village? Is there like a mm-hmm. hub that you can go get things if you need it? Oh, or in like, the Philippines, we call it Sari Sari store. Sari Sari store. Right. Okay. Like those retailer that they would, they would go to the bigger town, uh-huh. get all those grocery and stuff, like and bring cans of food and stuff, and then bring it there and then they would sell it for more, right? Mm-hmm. Individually. It's Ooh, not like a bowl. No, you don't get a six pack, huh? No. So you sell, they would sell it like one by one by one like that. And then like, for example, like an oil. They would actually distribute those oil into these little bags. Uh-huh. And then they would sell that for a certain kind of amount so that they can make profit. 
So, yeah. So it's kind of like a uh, AM, PM or 7 Eleven, mm, something like yeah, that. Yeah, but in a Filipino um, third world way. Yeah. So yeah. I get it. Mm-hmm. Damn. So you guys had that. Was there like schooling available to you guys? Or? Um, school was far. Uh-huh. Um, our elementary is like three kilometers away. Okay. Um, about like, I don't know how many, like two miles something. Two, two something miles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, high school was very far. It was five miles and it's a hike. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um during elementary it's easier because it's closer. But mm-hmm. we still need to walk through like, you know, pineapple field like, and stuff. Like jungle, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Legit jungle. Yeah. Like uh-huh. you know, you see those children in the documentary where they would actually go through rivers and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was you <laughs> that real was life. Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guess what, folks? It's real. Right. It's real. Very real. Dang. And yeah, it's amazing you know it always amazed me like reminding my remembering my childhood yeah actually it was fun and it was very different you know it's not like the first world um country where you guys even have like a free food in your government Mm -hmm. you know and your public school yeah in ours like we don't have that we need to provide our you know school supplies Mm-hmm. And then we need to provide our own allowance and food. And we, uh, on top of that, we need to walk yeah. to school. So Dang. it's like I, I did not really, I, I can say I did not really learn much during elementary sure. because that's like just me being a kid, right? Yeah. Like just playing around, chasing and stuff like that. Like all I look forward to going to school was just to play. Yeah, <laughs> I think everybody was at that age. <laughs> right. That's like me trying to get my dog just to like snuggle with me. Uh-huh. He's, oh, dude, I'm a puppy. Right. I got to run. <laughs> yeah. And he's got to run all over the house mm-hmm. for absolutely no reason. But I get it. I mean, I was a kid. At, I mean, yeah, we were all kids at that age. Mm-hmm. The last thing I wanted to do is sit still mm-hmm. in a classroom. Right. You know. So, but you did it. Do you feel, so... Do you do you all have like elementary, then like middle school, and then high school, or is it just now we have that system? Oh, okay. Right, we have like grade ten now, and then mm-hmm. eleven and twelve. But during my school age, we did not change the um, educational system yet. Mm-hmm. So we only have um, grade one to grade six, and then first year high school to fourth year high school. Oh wow. So only four years in high school. Yeah. So you were done about, what, like 14? 17. 17. Yeah. Uh, that's 16, how it, 17. Yeah, that's yeah. how it is here. You spent four years in high school. Mm-hmm. What'd you, how'd you feel about high school? Do you feel like you were learning a lot yet? Yes. That's gotcha. when, like, you know, the reality hits and it made you feel like I wish I had learned more <laughs> yeah. back when you, I was in elementary, mm-hmm. you know? It was hard because obviously your teacher would always tell you, like I never really Mm fail, but they would always tell you to do your um, homework and stuff like that during the elementary and also high school. But during those times, we don't have electricity. So your light is that those kerosene light. And I, I just mm. recently found out that those are actually really bad for your brain, the, the fume. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what we do is just um, a kerosene light. And then at that time, my parents are really poor, right? Mm. They can't hardly afford kerosene. So we, as soon as it gets dark, we will have our supper and we have the kerosene light. And after that, like, you know, my mom and dad would play guitar for a bit and she would sing and my dad would play guitar in our porch and stuff. Huh. And after that, it would just go to bed at 7.30 p.m. because there's nothing around. Mm. And that's pretty much uh, my excuse of not doing my homework <laughs> because... At that time, like, you know, you won't really have the energy to do it. At the same time, like, if you're so poor that they needed to, like, 
turn off the light, then how are you going to do your homework? Right. And it's also, you know, I'm not like saying this to belittle my parents. They're the most amazing people I sure. ever met. But um, they're very simple, right? Sometimes I envy them on how simple they are. Yeah. Like I, I felt like I was cursed of having the kind of brain that wants more, you know, wants more mm -hmm. in life. Because my parents are like, you know, they, they only graduated elementary, mm -hmm. never had high school or college and stuff like that. So they can't even help you with homeworks. Right. Yeah. So most of the time you need to figure it out yourself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you did it though you I did it, it and I'm here Yeah And it's amazing So when you finished high school What was like the next step for you? Where were you headed? Because um, you already said you have a mind of I, You know, I want be more things, better right. things Right So did then that push you in some It, it pushed me in direction? to get out of that place yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really just that it's like you know my parents was really hard for me they were they wanted me to succeed i guess you know and i keep telling them like you know to do this same method when you raise me to my siblings because right yeah. now i felt like they gotten soft you know my mm -hmm. my other brother is already 20 years old and he's still living with them they kick me out at 17, yeah. you know? They're like, okay, well, we can afford um, college, so you need to figure out your life, oh. right? Oh, the mom, <laughs> mom got in that Filipino accent too? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when they sit you down, when I heard that accent come in, I was like, oh, boy, I'm in trouble. Because <laughs> it's serious talk, right? you know? Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that was a, a wise move? your parents did mm -hmm. that give you a good push to be like okay yeah yeah it, it's really good and this is why i keep telling my mom now why is it so hard for you to kick him out and right. it's like because he's going to starve isn't, isn't that typical yeah. though for filipino families though the boys mm -hmm. yeah never leave i don't know why i don't know my parents <laughs> kicked us out <laughs> right when it was legal yeah i said get the fuck out of here man we're done with dealing with you guys right they didn't say it like that but they're yeah. like you gotta go Mm -hmm. um, we're done. We're done doing our part, which uh, can be frightening at that age. It is scary, you know. Like you know, I experienced pretty much homelessness in yeah. the Philippines. Yeah, you know, on my journey, and that was when I was like 19 years old. I was living with a group of friends that we are all exile, uh -huh. and there is this like older, you know. <clears throat> friend of ours that kind of like adopted all of us there's like 10 of us in that house and we can't hardly afford food mm. right so it was really really hard like most of the time I've, i i felt like just okay i might go back to the farm yeah you know but i was like what am i gonna do there Right? Farm. I can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of the reasons why I always had my excuses not to go. Oh, because like, you don't like to farm, I right? don't like ah, farming. Brother, I don't feel... Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. I don't want to farm. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you. Farming's hard it work. It's hard. Every Very day. Hard. Every day, you're busy. Yeah. You know? Um, the beginning of um, our... My, I mean, my parents and my... Um, my parents' relationship. They were abundant, you know. They're having good harvest and stuff. They're having good money. Mm. Until I'm about eight years old, that's when my dad decided to sell all the land that we had. And the carabao, I don't know if you know carabao, it's like a water buffalo. It mm -hmm. helps us, like, you know, clearing the farm and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's our um, organic tractor. Yeah. So... <clears throat> He decided to like sell all of those because he wanted to be a fisherman. But mm. when you're a farmer, you're good mm. on farming. You're not going to be good on fishing. Yeah. So that failed and we end up going back to the farm and everything just went downhill. Mm. And they never recovered from that. So Dang. at that point, 
we were like, okay, we don't have the carabao anymore to clear the land. So what you do is you clear off like a whole acre of land or or two by hand. You know, mm. by this like um, we call it sarol. Mm. It's something that you do that kind of thing. Oh, okay, and yeah, just yeah, to yeah. Clear, like you know, just to clean it up to clear a big piece of land so that you can plant, for example, like a string beans that would not be harvested after six seven months, mm. right? And I'm I'm not into that thing, yeah. and this is like one of the reasons why I keep pushing them to like have a self sustaining farm mm. to where they just plant the thing that they eat. Not they sell, right? Any leaf over from that, they can actually sell, and that's that will be their money for the rice. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. But they're, they're just stubborn. <laughs> it's that generation, you know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe your dad's got a lot of pride too, which I get. A lot of men do, mm. myself included. Um, yeah, I guess he may even like fighting the denial. Like, damn it, I I messed up. Right. You know. Yeah. So. I mean, in the Philippines, mental health is not entertained. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're just being dramatic. Just brush it off. Which is crazy because the, <laughs> the Filipino, cult, like, Filipino friends and family I have, even mm. the culture is very, like, upbeat, giving, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Very, like, they could have only one shirt. They'd be like, here you go. You know, it's very, like, Wow. But I, then there's that dark side. Yeah, I am like know? that. Even with my partner now. Mm -hmm. I kind of like, you know what? You're struggling. You know? I, I, I can't just sit right there. It's like, oh, you're struggling. Then figure it out. Right? Yeah. No. It would be like, okay, well, my credit is so bad already. But here, get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I it's just a very <laughs> Filipino thing. I think I got Filipino blood in me because I am the, exactly the same way. Yeah, you would I, sacrifice your own. Everything. I just, mm. uh, some, you know, I had to be put in my place just recently because mm. I was helping a lot of people financially, which I have no business helping anybody financially right now because right, right, I'm yeah. trying to pay off my school debt mm -hmm. and I'm tight, tight living. Mm -hmm. But I'm a lot like, you know, Filipino culture. I don't like seeing people like down suffering that's the thing you, know? you are a good person and i try to be you know in my dark i could be side, better <laughs> you were there you know and i appreciate that of course i just uh you know like you i've been just be you know i grew up here but i did not have an easy life whatsoever mm -hmm. a lot of pain a lot of trauma mm -hmm. you know constantly you know i talk about it on almost every podcast i should probably stop talk about myself <laughs> you can talk to, to me about but it, it, it it's important because i i bring it to a lot of people's attention because i was born with a cleft lip and palate mm -hmm. which you would regularly see in third world countries mm -hmm. uh you see it a lot in the philippines mm -hmm. um in india and stuff like that so i had it and i can't i went through a surgery all the way up to i was about 24 or 5 that's a lot of surgery i either had one or two a year mm -hmm. Um, the reason they did it is because I had just a unique case of, you know, I was both cleft lip and palate. Mm -hmm. So as I grew, they kept having to like mold my nose because my nose was done. Right, like right. this is all plastic surgery. This is as good as they, you know, right, they could can get, get it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I had, my vision was almost gone. Mm -hmm. My hearing was gone. They had to fix that. Mm -hmm. uh, they were able to save one eye. So I got one good eye. Mm hmm I could see out of this my uh, right eye, but if I were to lose my left, I I can't drive. I can't. I'm done. Right. I'm, I'm sitting at home trying to figure out what to do next at that point. Mm -hmm. And so, with all that being said, it's like, like kind of like you, you have to like endure all this mm -hmm. because I had that mindset too. I was like, I don't want to live like this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like being in pain. And mind you, I didn't have a choice, but I told myself, once I'm done with all the surgeries, uh, I'm done. I'm not having any more surgery. Right. And, you know, I'm going to use that story as to, like, inspire people. Inspire people. Mm -hmm. And it's made me quite a softy because I had a lot of people who I've never met in my entire life. Mm -hmm. You know, all these surgeons, nurses that were extremely nice. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like. Here's a little scared little boy. Just, I guess this is a normal life. 
Mm-hmm. Far from it. And um, it really has made me the person I am. Yeah. It have has it bit me in the ass a few times for sure. Yeah, <laughs> but it molded you to a better person. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and I think uh, I I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like people who endure such crazy like lifestyles, what we think is you mm-hmm. know an American thinks is crazy, uh, it makes you some of the, the strongest people I've ever met in my life. It's you know? maybe because we've been to the most to the deepest and the bottom right right it's like and seeing people even if that's not like you know the rock bottom yet seeing them hurts us right it makes us more compassionate towards their pain because we know exactly how it felt like to be in that place right and it felt like to be nobody is there for us Mm -hmm. except ourselves right exactly Mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why. Like, you know, yes, pain is truly painful and it's not easy and it's not comfortable, but it usually tend to create good humans. Yeah. You know? It really does. And I as, feel. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, you go go right ahead. I mean, um, there is a lot of this, you know, stigma now where we have so much life coaches, right? And yeah. they're coaching based on their um, experiences in life, mm-hmm. you know. And they're doing that because they know how it felt like to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a hard time, though, with those, like, uh, upbeat coaches. Because mm-hmm. the majority of the time, they are just talking about themselves um, and yeah. trying to get themselves like, yeah, I'm a c- I'm right. badass, right, you know. Right, right. <laughs> no, I think, like, a lot of people needed that, right? There's some, a lot of people. Some people click with it for sure. Yeah, yeah, because in our society, we're so into the social world mm-hmm. of like, you know, the social media and everything. And we think everything is perfect, right? And if we're not having a certain kind of lifestyle as this one that we idolize, we hate our lives. Right. Because why is it not like, like theirs? But most of that is actually very... Um, <clears throat> I mean, not fully true, mm-hmm. I would say, because you can go to my social media, you can go to my Instagram, oh, she's traveling everywhere, right? Right. Oh, she's traveling everywhere, or she's having all these moments in life. You just see the surface, yeah. right? I'm traveling everywhere. I'm broke as fuck. <laughs> 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 right like you yeah. know i i i crash on my friends couches yeah you know but i love living life that way i don't care about the monetarily and i don't care about possession and stuff i wanted the memories here right. because that's the one that nobody can ever steal from me yeah therefore you need to do the sacrifice of being broke and it's being okay with like you know just sharing your friends houses everywhere i go mm-hmm. to arizona i crash on my family's couch and if i go to miami i crash on my friend's bed yeah and it's like well that's how i afford things yeah yeah i travel <clears throat> i'm the same way i travel i try to stay with friends mm-hmm. but it was, it's also gets to the point where it does inconvenience them mm. and then at that point obviously i just get a room or something well, you know airbnbs are pretty pretty affordable yeah when um i was in like you know the darkest side recently i went mm. to arizona to kind of like seek refuge and i was like crashing on my friend's couch and I felt like I'm intruding something, right? And this is one of the reasons why I actually returned here in Salt Lake. Because I didn't want to inconvenience them of my existence. Because me putting myself into that situation, that was my decision, yeah. right? And I always like say, oh, if something wrong happens, I can get myself out of there and I'll be okay, <laughs> Yeah. Right? Sometimes it's so easy to say things when it did not happen yet. And then when it happens, you're like, okay, wow, it's actually harder than I thought yeah. it would ever be. Mm-hmm. Dang. <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy what we are, uh, put ourselves through. and uh, I mean, It's wild, right? Yeah. I mean, I, it's good. 
Yeah. Right? You keep making mistakes. Yeah, I just, I get tired of it too because I watch myself doing it. I'm like, why are you helping people? Mm -hmm. You don't have money to help people right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up, other <laughs> you. I'm going to do it anyway because that's the right thing to do. Right. And you're like, you know what? I can skip this meal and that meal yeah, and that yeah, meal yeah. so I can afford to help this person. Yeah. And that's really selfless of you. There's not a lot of that left in here. There's not. <laughs> and you know what? I, I had a hard, I've had a hard time doing it because um, I've had to really step away from a lot of folks. Mm. It's just like, you know, I help you out. I don't expect you to pay me back because, or else I wouldn't help you out. Mm. But I expect, and maybe this is where I go wrong with it big time. I expect you a friendship still. Mm -hmm. You know, give me a call. How how am I doing? Right. Return the favor. Right. And boy, have I been stomped on lately. And it's like, okay, I can't help. I'm going to have to be really selective. Like, Welcome to America. Yeah. It's an American <laughs> fucking greed. I don't I get so it. Great. What the fuck? I mean, I get it. Uh, but, you know, I don't know where I got my heart from, my kindness. And I think it's because of what I've been through. Mm -hmm. Just traumatized from day one. Mm -hmm. Where most people will hit this way later in life. Like when they're older, right. their health is bad, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mine was bad from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm in a period where it's okay. But I, I worry, you know. I don't want to go blind. I can go blind a lot easier than a lot of folks. I can mm -hmm. lose my hearing instantaneously. Right. So, you know, it freaks me out. And... um but I was like, you know, I, I just, I've been, so many people have helped me out. So many. Mm -hmm. People I don't even know. People I do know. And it's like, whenever I get the opportunity, I, I need to, to return the back. favor. Yeah. You know, I can't walk around life going, I did it on my own, man. No one helped me, bro. Like, that is the most ignorant uh, state of mind I, I don't like being around. It gets you exhausting. Don't it get is. Me Super. Yeah, it gets exhausting. It's the same way with my family. Yeah. It can get, yeah, like you said, I get tired of helping. It's like, oh my God, forget it. Yeah, and most <laughs> especially if you felt like they never really appreciated it. And right. then they go running to you when it's dark again, yeah. right? Like, you know, on their best, they just forget about you. Mm -hmm. And then it gets dark for them again. And then they're like, hey, you know, yeah. I love my family. You know, they're one of those really amazing ones. But the one that communicate with me bo uh, most is just my brother, the one that fetch water for me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we are very close and I know, you know, he's always there. If I have time, like he would call me a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. He's the one that like just want my friendship or misses me or something. Mm -hmm. Same as my, I mean, my parents misses me, but I hate that fact that like, you know, a lot of Filipino does this and a lot of Filipino abroad experience this, right? They would only say, hi, how are you? And after that, you're going to, can I borrow money? Mm -hmm. By them saying, borrow money, it's, can I have some money from you that I don't need to repay? Right? Mm -hmm. And if you've been doing that, like forever and never really had anything come back to you. It feel it, it sometimes it gets exhausting, yeah. right? Because on my family, like um, when I finally moved out, my second job was a nanny, right? I worked for my aunt, mm -hmm. and at that time, my brother went to the hospital and they cannot afford um, the hospital bill, mm -hmm. so they end up borrowing money from my aunt. And then that money is being paid by me. So I'm working mm. towards those debt, gotcha. not having anything. So I'm kind of like a human slave. Like, okay, I want this money. Mm -hmm. I'll put my daughter in here and she would work for you for years. And I did mm. that for three years. Dang. <clears throat> so this was after high school. High, high school, yeah. Yeah, you're coming back. <laughs> did you have to move kind of closer? Is Manila was Manila ever in your life? Manila is only in my life during my interview and medical gotcha. to come here in the U.S. To come here. Yeah. Let, let's talk about how long it take, takes and things like that to get to the U.S. 
So you worked as a nanny for three years. Mm-hmm. After that, where, where, what was the next step? Um, after you? that, I was doing, um, co- not cook. I was actually a server. So okay. after the nanny thing, and I was like, you know, I'm done. With yeah. this. I, I Dude, miss serving. the kid uh-huh. because that was like the closest I had experience how to be a mom gotcha. right mm-hmm. because this kid was just bit out in the world and since then i took care of him until he's three years old you know i was there when he was sick and everything about a kid like the one that you would actually wake up in the middle of the night to feed mm. this little creature yeah so <laughs> <laughs> it was fun and i'm thankful for my aunt actually for giving me that kind of experience mm-hmm. because it made me don't want the kid in the future <laughs> yeah kid, the kids like, are uh, no joke uh, they don't go away i think that's what yeah. people get caught off guard and like dude he, he's 30 and he's still yeah i mean you're the parent man it doesn't end Mm because they're 18 no yeah it's gonna be forever it's a long it's a lifetime (laughs) commitment so yeah but anyway um we were gonna talk about the um process of going to the u.s yeah so you probably i'm sure you worked a different amounts of jobs oh yeah and eventually you're like what made you decide to go to the U.S.? I mean, like a lot of people do, I came here through fiancé visa. Fiancé visa? Yeah, so okay. I married someone. Sure. But I did not marry him for for green card. No. Sometimes I joke, around, I joke around it. And in my current relationship, I was like, why don't we do like a 90-day fiancé? And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm here for Andrew because I want my green card. <laughs> 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 that's sometimes that's the only way to get right. here without such a hassle no my my relationship was actually really real real gotcha. so i was working as a server on this restaurant and i worked myself up to i became a manager but every night you know how religious filipinos are right yeah so catholic I, correct? yeah yeah catholic mm-hmm. we always go to the church and I always go to the church on my way home, right? This is my tactics because I felt like I'm sorry to the Filipino men. I just didn't feel like I have a future mm. if I choose a Filipino man. So this is what I did. It's like after work, I go straight to the church and I would pray for someone to come in my life and I go to the internet cafe. <laughs> <laughs> So you had access to internet, <laughs> dating apps. Dating apps. And at that Fair time, enough. I think it was like, you know, like Yahoo. Sure, yeah, chat yeah. Thingy, Old school right? chat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I met this guy. And, you know, we'd been talking here and there. And we continued to talk. And he kind of like cut me off, actually. Like, hey, I mm. found someone else. Like, you know. And... I'm like, okay, whatever. And I'm just going to go find someone else. Mm. And so, Lord, right, right, round two. Just, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, one night, he just chatted me like, hey, I'm in Sambuanga. Sambuanga is the most dangerous part of the Philippines. Oh. I'm like, oh, what are you doing there? <laughs> oh, he, do you know where you're at? <laughs> right, right. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I got catfish. Oh. Oh. And then, do you want to meet? Like, do you want to meet? Mm-hmm. You know? And he was like, he went to Davao to meet someone there and then went to me. And then, like, we end up liking each other. So, at that point, we lived together in the Philippines for three years. Wow. Right? So, and I was he like... he was a U.S. citizen? Yeah, he is okay. a U.S. citizen. And then at that point, I was like, oh, my God, this is God's answer to my prayers, right? Yeah. And (laughs) I always had this saying that I always say to people, I asked God for um, sugar, but he gave me salt, Mm. right? Uh So through this relationship, I was like, this is my ticket to go to the U.S. So I was not really like, you know, I am human. There is dark in me. No matter how much I would say, oh, I'm a good person. 
we always have our alter our, uh, artillery. I can't pronounce it. Our uh, motive. Our yeah, our hidden agenda. Right, our hidden yeah, agenda. Yeah, yeah. But my hidden agenda is that I wanted to be in the U.S. and I wanted to be in the U.S. since when I was like what, twelve years old. Gotcha. Right, and I was like, this is my ticket, so I'm gonna take it. Sure. Right. Sure. This guy had beat me up every week. Mm -hmm. Right, would throw me outside of our door and stuff, and I would have bruises everywhere. And I took that shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, I, I took it. I took every beating, everything, mm -hmm. and stuff. And at that time, I'm, I'm I was already doing modeling, you know, because this person helped me to discover a different life. Although he was very negative, at the same time, he actually. Um, helped me to become, you know, a better version of myself, physically. Mm -hmm. So, at, yeah, at wow. that point, we're like just continuously to um, do it over and over again. Like we would break up, I would run away to the farm and he would like be there in a few hours asking me to come back. So mm -hmm. it become more like a, almost so like, like a, a trauma bond. Yeah, very toxic. Yeah, it's very yeah. toxic. And it's like, codependency mm. right and um back in 2014 i think yeah 2014 i met him um 2010 mm -hmm. i think 2011 but um back in 2014 it was december and i was gonna go visit my family like you know december 24th was um a birthday of two my of my brothers and on the 23rd he just beat me up to the point where I could not take it anymore. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I go running to this corner and you see this like six foot guy kicking the hell out of me in the corner of the room mm -hmm. to where I felt like my bones is about to break everywhere. Right. And then pick me up and then throw me again in the door and like have all my legs like cut and stuff. Damn. And at that point, I was like, I'm done you want me in your life I think we need a break at the same time you need to go back to the US because at that time I was the one who's supporting him in the Philippines and it was not cheap yeah, you know it's already really poor there and you're supporting them. yeah I, I can't even help my family at that yeah. time like you know they would come to me like oh you have a family you know the Thai people when you have a white guy they the white guy would support the family right right so they have that kind of the same expectation in the Philippines but I'm like I can't because he is here we cannot afford it and all I can afford is to renew his um what's this like his travel visa yeah like his that? tourist visa so okay. every three months we need to renew that and that's like Two three hundred dollars, and he stayed there for three years. For three years, yes. Boy, was he? Does he had something going home back home that he was mm -hmm. scooping no, he away from? He pretty much like give up everything here, uh -huh. and was gonna move there for good, right? Oh, uh, okay, okay. So yeah, and I was like, okay, well, I'm doing modeling. I'm doing call center at the same time, and I was like, well, we, I can support us, right? Yeah. But at that point, we're like. Oh, I just got so fed up with it. And I go to the cops to report him. The cops would like, oh, what did you do? Mm. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's like, what did you do to deserve that? Like, did you cheat it? I was like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, our system is just really backward back home. Yeah, a lot of corruption right. over there. Uh -huh. yeah. So if you don't put money in it, then good luck uh, having, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. Damn. So at that point, I was like, you know what? You need to go back to the U.S. And he did. He was like, oh, no, 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 I'll be good. I'm like, no. I'll you said that so many times. And you said you will never do it again. And after a week, I get beat up again. Like, you know, my body cannot have that time where I don't have bruises. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, you need to go back home. Like, this is good. Like, it's more like a status symbol because, you know, Filipino, we love to have our white guy, yeah. right? It's it's a thing. You it know, really is a thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we, we want that hybrid kid, 
And yeah. it's like a <laughs> Filipino American kid. Right. They they're not really like a really good mix. Right. So we I wanted that. But I'm like, you know what? This is not worth the price. So let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. You go back to the US and I stay here. And after a year, um he did um fiance visa. So the application for fiance visa. When the USAIS um, accepted the letter because you need to like you know pile all those paperwork mm -hmm. and stuff like after I think six months for me until I got <clears throat> a confirmation to go for a interview in Manila mm -hmm. so after that you kind of like book a date for interview in the USAS and at the same time you need to have a medical Mm. to do anything like right yeah they need to check every inch of you like you until to the point where you're actually like fully naked in front of the doctor you're spreading your ass cheeks and stuff whoa <laughs> going in <laughs> all so, right yeah. big breath in <laughs> yeah <laughs> is that all you got doc <laughs> mm, yeah right <laughs> you're like um am i doing something am i supposed like, to push <laughs> i'll put i'm gonna go ahead and push <laughs> So yeah, um, there's that, and then it was actually a really fun story, yeah. Because they would load you up with so many vaccines. Yeah, we love our vaccines over here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I had like double vaccinated for Woo. everything. You're good to go. <laughs> I Bulletproof guess. at that point. <laughs> I guess, and um, yeah, during my interview. It was also crazy because a lot of people, most especially a lot of Filipinos, they would overthink so much about the interview, right? Mm -hmm. They're like so scared and they have all this proof of relationship, most especially if you're doing fiancé. And I don't have much, you mm -hmm. know? I don't have much. I only have like six pictures of us in three years. And then the interviewer like asked me, he was like, isn't it? peculiar that you guys live together here for three years and you only have six pictures in the same day and that was the day that like he was actually about to leave mm. right and i answered like you know what because we fight a lot and every time we fight we delete all our pictures and it's and he's oh. Okay, that's <laughs> not a good answer. <laughs> no, no, it was actually really surprising. He's like, okay, well, welcome to America. Oh, man, everyone hates <laughs> so, Americans. I get it, man. We're spoiled. Right. So but We didn't We didn't know. I don't think anybody asked to be spoiled. It's like anybody anywhere in the world, whatever you're born into. You that's kind of kinda take your for thing. granted. Yeah. yeah, there are a this lot of... This is our, what we were born into. We want, we don't. We don't have. Right. You know, what we have, we don't appreciate. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of things where I go, fuck, dude. Mm -hmm. I am so lucky to even have hot water to take a shower. Mm, you know? Yeah. Can you imagine those times where you actually grab a bucket mm -hmm. from like uh, some just, kind of like a drum? <laughs> yeah. And then like pour it like that. It's <laughs> ice cold. <laughs> like super ice cold yeah. water. Why well, do the ice bath? So, you know. Well, I guess it's good for you. Yeah. I like that weird stuff but yeah so you got you delete all your pictures mm -hmm. they tell you think welcome to america mm -hmm. and you were like so can i go now yeah they're like yeah you're approved and they yeah. hit the stamp <laughs> yeah they hit the stamp and you're like okay well wow <laughs> like, oh is that all i had to say <laughs> hey, guys, hey guys i just want to let you know all you have to say is <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like i had this friend i met her in the like you know in the interview Oh, in medical, actually. And then she has this paperwork. And, like, they're like, well, you need to, uh, you know, submit more paperwork. And she's like, and then you just have nothing. That's so biased. Mm. <laughs> and, but I think that's also, like, you know, this is a really important um, information. Ours was W-2, right? Mm -hmm. My partner at that time, he was earning W-2. If you have someone that earns the 99 or own their own business, they have to declare everything. Mm. And that's when you have all those paperwork that you need to fill up. Gotcha. So that was the thing. 
And uh-huh. it's actually easier when you just, you know, go and become a sheep of the government. Really? That rather than like, you know, becoming like, oh, your own, you are a business owner and stuff like this. You have a lot more to prove. Yeah, mm-hmm. every every dollar has to be mm-hmm. counted for. Mm-hmm. How you spend it, how you get it, who you're giving it to. Right. Yeah. It can be. Maybe they're afraid of like someone money laundering or something. But <sighs> The United States government has plenty of money. They get money every day mm-hmm. from everybody who works way harder than they do. And Chris Rock did a whole thing on it. Mm. He's like, government, every two weeks, they jack your ass. Mm-hmm. Every two weeks. Yeah. And they don't even lift a finger. Right. You know? So I get it. I get why, like, and if I knew how to, I'm not going to say it out loud, but, you know, mm-hmm. if I knew how to work money, I would definitely right. figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, that's also, like, one thing about America is, you know, it's not the land of money. It's land of opportunity. And it's the land for the brave. Mm-hmm. It's tough here, too. Yeah. It comes with its own demons. Yeah. And it's like, you uh-huh. know, after a few months of that, like I booked my flight here and yeah. stuff. And it was agonizing 26-hour flight. Oh, <clears throat> I could barely handle six. Right, like, you know, when I rough. when I go to Florida, I was like, "That's a long flight." <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it. It's like a five hour flight. Yeah, it, that's a long flight for some reason. It's right. it's always connecting. There's never a direct, and mm. it just takes forever to get there. Yeah, yeah, I hate going there. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily, I always find one way. Uh, Ooh, not one way. Good like, for you. Um, just you know, straight. Straight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, I was like, oh wow. America, like the, it's very clean. It's it's land of the rich and everything. Mm-hmm. I can finally be in the place where I wanted to be. And don't get me wrong, when I got here, I felt like home. Mm-hmm. You know, nice. when I got here, I felt like this is where I belong, and there this this is where I should make my life, and like you know build my life and stuff. Nice. And then you start seeing the reality of your dreams because everything, it's better to imagine things than to be there in person, right? Ooh. Yeah. It's like when you look at these really beautiful places you find in the television and you want to be there. Yeah. 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 And it's like, oh God, it's, it's like heaven. Mm-hmm. When you get that, there is weather. <laughs> and it's like yeah it's so beautiful but it's very hot or it's very humid or there's so much mosquitoes yeah. we human we do not imagine that so as a citizen of a third world country i imagine everything is perfect in the u.s mm. you know so for the next three months of your life landing here you're going to have a homesickness and realizing that it's not always greener in the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, well, there are people. I did not know about homeless people. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that only exists in the Philippines. Yeah. But it has become a really big problem here. Yeah, it is. <sighs> the homeless thing, I, I get, but I don't get. Um, I used to be very sympathetic to homeless people because my brother, he's homeless Mm -hmm. my younger brother but after a while you start to go hold up if you can stand on the side of the road for eight hours Mm -hmm. and look pretty decent in health you don't look like you're Mm -hmm. being outrageous you know there's people that just stand there no emotion Mm -hmm. you could probably get it you could probably turn that around yeah and get a job yeah you i've always told people you have to try to be homeless in the united states like, mm-hmm. you have to put more effort in being homeless than getting your life together. Yeah, because there is help here, right? A lot. Yeah. There's so much. It's insane what they'll do for you. Yeah. And people just, no. Nah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. And this is what most of them tell you. Because my brother told me. I like doing things on my own time. When I do it, uh, I get to do it how I want to do it. No one gets to tell me what to do, mm-hmm. when to do it. And uh, I just, I want to live like that. Yeah. I was like, well, you're not going to have a very long life if that's how you want to live it. Yeah. It's like, I'm kind of like a hobo. 
but not to the point where like that right you know i cannot i i cannot i, I can't I, do it yeah especially in utah i'm like bro it's winter out here uh, yeah you're gonna w- die wouldn't this be enough to be like okay i'm done mm-hmm. you know i have jackets and layers on i'm like I'm somewhat warm. Right. Like these fools are out with like tank tops and boots and shorts. It's snowing. I'm like, dude, is it worth it anymore? Is it really worth being homeless? Yeah. You know? I, I'm addicted. Get in line, bro. Everyone's right. addicted to everything. everything. Yeah. Just stop being so addicted to it. Right. Learn to control it better. Yeah. It's like you yeah. can do it, but not to the point where it ruins everything. Right. It was actually really funny. The first yeah. winter I was here, I know. Yeah, I started coming here February of 2021. Mm-hmm. And um, my boyfriend actually took me to downtown, right? I saw this homeless camps and it was like thick snow. Mm-hmm. And you know, my experience, I was like, oh my God, they're going to die. <laughs> so Some do die. That's why I said, I was mm-hmm. like, why? Like, yeah, I, I don't get it because when I got here, my relationship did not come back. Right. I got married with him mm-hmm. and it's like, it, there's nothing there that is left. You know, yeah. there is nothing there that is left. We both felt alienated by each other, right? Like the relationship is no longer working out. So by the time I was a year here, I ran out. Mm-hmm. You know, I ran away because it was the same thing, the same problem, except the beating. Because yeah. he knows that if yeah, he you, beat you, me up mm-hmm. here, he's going to get to jail. Depends mm-hmm. on the woman, though, too. I know friends that get beat down still. And still at the same still spot. Still with the same guy. Yeah. I don't get it. It's it's the trauma thing back when they were a kid. And that's the only thing I can think of. It's like, you're putting up with this because you saw somebody else put up with this. Right. Um, nobody wakes up or is born with the intentions of, all right, I'm going to get beat and that's normal. Right. That's yeah. something learned or, you know, yeah. saw. Yeah. So thing. that, and then it's more like in the Philippines, we got you know, screwed with this instinct of once we find a man, for better, for worse, right. we will stick into that. And yeah. this is, you know, the, I know there are negative and positive side of dating certain kind of group and stuff or certain kind of people. Sure. But mm-hmm. this is why a lot of Filipinos, we are very devoted because we are born to, you know, just take what we have and be the best with it, right? <clears throat> we don't have divorce. So as soon as you get married into that man, that man is going to be your husband for the rest of your life, even he if he beats you up or not, mm-hmm. you know? Like I come to that point where I was already like um, a few months here and I was like, I told my mom, I can't have physical thing with him anymore. Yeah. You know, I don't have physical attraction with him. It, it grows me out. And she said, well, deal with it. You are a wife. That's your obligation. And that bugs me. Yeah. I was like, obligation? I, I can't just commute into a man I don't like, right? And think, oh, it's my obligation because I'm a wife. Mm. And she's okay with that, I guess, because my mom, I mean, they have the most... Him and my dad, they have the most um, successful relationship. And I wanted my relationship to be like them. But she is actually arranged marriage to Mm. my dad. She just learned to love him. You know, he is her first for everything. So she has the real monogamous relationship with my dad. Dang. (laughs) Kudos to them. For some, that's it. One hit wonders, yeah, and it works. I mean, it, it's good in a way, because our topic is like going everywhere. That's okay. I, I know we're gonna go from here back to. Mm. It's okay. I'm following you. Don't okay. worry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, what's good about having the traditional way is that we don't give ourselves everywhere, right? Mm. When you have this. For example, I am I'm arranged marriage to this man, and this man is the only man I ever been. 
and this man is kind and good to me and proving himself that he's worth it, it's actually good. Mm -hmm. Because we, nowadays, we grow into this um, culture of, oh, my life with this woman is good, but I could have something better, right? I am yeah. happy now, but I could be happier, you know? Oh, there is something about this woman that I don't like, but I can have it with someone else, mm -hmm. right? So in our dating scene here in America, which is, I really find disgusting and I'm so tired of it. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> really bad. And I was like, we are into that generation where sex is just sex, right? And we get to sleep with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Some of them we like, some of them we don't like. And it teach us like, oh, I like it with him. But when you find a partner that is devoted to you and wanted to do it with you, like, you know, for the rest of your life, it's something lacking. Mm -hmm. You know what? Because you got spoiled by your experience through you all through all your journey mm. so interesting <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah i would hate to uh be in the trenches with dating yeah that's tough because like you tough. said everybody's like well my god nah, this isn't working out so swipe 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 swipe, swipe. Yeah. yeah no it, it just become really easy to um, yeah no one really tries yeah. i mean you know it's like minimal effort huh they got their whole like profile and they feel like they know everything about you. Yeah. And you have to say some witty remarks and like, look at me. Well, what <laughs> I discovered was the lies in the game. Yeah, it's most mm. 95, 90, I would say actually 99% is yeah. dog shit. I mean, don't you know? get me wrong. I, just, like, I, <laughs> I put it in there to be like, oh, I am this, I am that, right? Mm -hmm. And... It's kind of like, you know, it's something I can met. Yeah. A lot of people say things that they can't ever do. That's the problem. Just to have someone. And you know what? It would fail. Yeah. Because if you provide someone a hope of something, just in order for them to be attracted to you, then you have to keep up with that. Yeah, you got to keep up with that. I've done that too. Guilty. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? And then you realize, oh, this is actually not me. Yeah. Then you're like, this is a lot of work, man. Right. They don't even like me. They just like what I'm... What you what promised them. Yeah. 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 And they, they, for example, they start living with you. They discover the dark side of you. And they're like, you know what? You're not the person I know you are mm -hmm. before because you didn't really show that part, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a it's such a weird game we do to each other. Yeah, because we've all done it, all the good shit to somebody, all the bad shit, uh -huh. lie, whatever. We're all guilty of it. Yeah, and, but we keep going back for more. It's <laughs> exactly. crazy, right? <laughs> like <laughs> We're if addicted we addicted human beings, man. Yeah, if we can just, you know what? We just need to chill. Mm, it's more like if we can just be honest to ourselves. Yeah, because yeah. there are a lot of people that would be okay with us for who we are yeah a lot know? a lot of people that's what you hit it right on the money mm -hmm. if you just like hey this is who i am man like oh yeah. okay Take but we, but we hide bit. about we hide yeah. behind words and like pictures yeah and, like you know, you know um you do you swipe up on my um my dating app and you're like oh wow model this and that must be really good. Has a lot of hobby and stuff. Uh, you never really know that I'm really jealous yeah. when I get or so I'm committed. I'm a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I stalk everything you do. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's my culture. You are my boyfriend now. Therefore, you help me with my insecurity. Right. Right? You got to build me up, fool. Right. Or put me down. Uh, it's like, oh... I would question everything that you do. What are you doing in your phone? What's yeah. this? What's that? Right? Because it was like the trauma that I had from the past, I did not like really clear it off. I mm -hmm. just jumped from an, a boat to another. Right. 
and it was it had become like you know a conflict so it's like a lot of people would like oh you know she's this she's that why this you know things happen like it's not just the story of our lives there's always like you know the other side of the coin right yeah i mean like a lot of stories out there is like we just listen to that person talking we never really speak to the person who is in the other side you know right. so yeah <clears throat> yeah that's that's uh, a wild world i feel bad for people who are hopping into it mm -hmm. good luck I mean, good luck finding anyone who's genuine nowadays I mean, and they're yeah. there don't get me wrong they are there but boy far and few in, in between i mean like you know for example if I get out of there. I'm not going to show them who I really am yeah. I'd right away and stuff. Because the problem is we have this generation of complaints, you know, because of my ex did this to me, did that to me, and this. And then no matter what I did, like, you know, she just still did me wrong and just take advantage of me. Mm -hmm. And then God sent you. Someone that would treat you better than whoever can ever treated you, and you screw them up. Yeah, you know, you Ain't disvalue the them and stuff. You know, I, I don't get that that instinct. It's like all you can hope for is this kind of person, yet you don't want to appreciate it. Yeah. Right? It's like okay. What else do you want? Or maybe she had her reason why she did that. Yeah. Maybe because you were doing that in the first place. Right? True. And it's like, if we can just own... I was like talking to this with my boyfriend in the car. The nice other, car, by the way. I mean... That's a nice ride. Yeah. You can talk on it. It's cool. <laughs> hey, man, it's all right to have cool shit. Right, right. right. I like um, that car. I was like, oh, okay. He has All the right. GTR. I think you would like it better. But baller. They're still um, building Oh, he has a it. GTR? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. He has a slammed one, right? It's, it's real low. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I like yeah. GTR. Um, yeah. By the time it's going to be done, it's about like 1,500 horsepower. Oh, so Wow. Why does he need to go that fast? Oh, well, you know, Man. The, the, racing, <laughs> the racing scene in yeah. Utah. You know, I've been trying to find a good scene. Maybe your guy can turn me on to cars. I love cars. Yeah. I've, I mean, like, you know, when we have um, car shows, since I'll invite you. Yeah, let me know. I've been yeah. wanting to, like, meet people in that scene mm -hmm. because uh, I love cars that I can't afford. They're just really cool. I used to, I used <laughs> to think, like, you know, I judge them. Like yeah. you, I mean, like I have. I to, don't. You know, I, I go, damn. <laughs> what do I got to do to get? I know what I got to do to get there. Right. But Earn more I don't, money. I don't want to do it. Stop just, helping. Yeah. Yeah. Stop helping. <laughs> but I'm more like, can you just take me for a ride? Right. And I'm completely satisfied with yeah. that. Well, we'll yeah. take you for a ride. Damn, that car is cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's like, you know, we were driving and what's up with the drivers here in Utah? They're the worst. Mm. They love to sit in your blind spot. Yeah. And then like, you know, they won't let you mm -hmm. go. Yeah, they're super like, shitty. Yeah. And he's like having this, like, why are they so like this? And I explained it to him. I said, because we people, we tend to not actually see our fault, you know. If we are just um, mature enough to own up with our, our problems, because like, you know, he, this person really cut us off mm -hmm. but he's the one who looked at us like it was our fault right, right. but it, it was not that like you know i told him that like a lot of us don't own up on our mistakes because we think we're right most of the time right yeah. therefore it's other people's problem or there, there, there's something wrong with them and this this is why we are in this generation where <clears throat> There's always like have those people. That, oh, it's because of him. Why does my life is like this? Because of him, I am miserable right now. Mm -hmm. But we do not hear 
this word of saying, because of my decision, I am in this place, right? Because yeah. we have our own brain, right? We have our own capability of doing our own decision. Why are we blaming what happens in our life on other people? Well, we can control it. Because if we do not allow that, or if we own up, own up in our own mistakes and everything, then, you know, we have a full control of ourselves and full control of other people, like, you know, outside. Like, not full control of outside, but we cannot control that. But I'm saying is how it would affect us, mm. right? Because if we are in that spot, if we have that mentality of like, you know what, I did wrong, I'm sorry, kind of thing. It's like everything could be a little bit better, yeah. right? But the thing is, it's always like, you know, oh, it's them. It's not me, mm -hmm. you know? Damn, some truth. Will you start writing books soon? <laughs> Yeah. I'm I'm still vlogging, but like not writing books yet. You should. You got a lot of wise wise wisdom, you know. Mm. You just been through a lot, you know, and then you came here, and then that dude didn't work out. Mm. And then what happened? How, do you? And did you go to Phoenix from that that point on? Yeah, mm -hmm. and remember I said earlier that God gave me salt instead of sugar. Uh -huh. This applies to my relationship with that person and also my green card. But the first is in the relationship. God put me into his life to teach me lessons, you know, to mm. have self-value and make sure that I will never put myself there again, right? right? If it is not because of him, I would never learn how to be independent because there's a lot of Filipina wives or fiancé that come here and become dependent to their partner, right? They come here, their partner support them, they stay in the house, and there's no growth. My partner, you know, brought me here, put me to work without working permit, without um, working visa or green mm -hmm. card, you know, and actually, like, teach me how to survive without that. Like, you know, I become like one of those Mexicans that jump off the border, yeah. right? Under the table thing. Under the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is why, like, when we were talking about homeless people earlier, mm -hmm. I don't get it. Because I was not homeless. Even I did not have green card. Even I don't have any paperwork to work. I did um, caregiving for three years. Mm -hmm. Like, I took care of a quadriplegic um, patient mm -hmm. and stuff. And then put them to bed and stuff like that. And doing all those personal thingy that comes with it right so, right so, yeah you know there is a way to survive here there is a way to make it mm -hmm. and you're a test to that yeah you came from places that most of us don't even think that exist right but very much are very much real mm -hmm. and then you put up with you know some pretty horrendous beating <laughs> which i felt like you should have hit him back Oh, I did in the oh, very okay, beginning. Okay. I yeah. did try. And I like, you know, you know, no matter how much I try, it's way bigger than me. Yeah, at some point, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, there's a bigger mm -hmm. person and they will. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. And I always tell them, you are a bully. Why don't you figure, um, you know, someone yeah. your size and see how tough you are? Yeah. yeah, yeah. My dad always, I almost chopped his head with machete. Oh, machete. with the machete? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, God. Like, we were leaving by my dad at that time. It was early in the relationship. And, you know, my dad was there, like, sharpening the machete. Right in front of him? No, no, no. Like, outside, doing, like, their porch. <laughs> and we were in our hut. And then he said, like, cook. I'm like, I don't feel like cooking right now. So, Brother. Yeah. He started, <laughs> like, you know, he just get a bucket of water and... Uh, you know, pour it in me in bed and then slap me in the face. And then I shout, right? This because I your, got surprised. Your guy doing that? My ex husband. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn, what a dick move. Right. Time to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I shouted really, like, I, sc I mean, I scream. My dad heard it. And mm. then he went out with a machete. <laughs> Dang, nothing scarier than parents that are upset. Yeah, you and, know? and then my. Um, trying to protect your kid. Yeah, ex-husband at that time grabbed me in the hair and like do this action with the scissor. 
he's kind of like taking me as a hostage Jeez. and i'm like trying to calm my dad i'm like it's okay he just poured water on me and it's like oh okay okay like you know that <laughs> but yeah. that was crazy <laughs> that's crazy i'm su- i'm surprised he got that wild you know mm. and that you just like no nah, huh? I'm going to get through this and I'm going to get to the U.S., you know. It's the you know? stubborn side of me. Sure, you know? yeah. I, if, I, I mean, I get why you did it. I totally understand. Like, mm. you know, here's the opportunity. Uh, I'm going to have to stick this one out. I get it. I, I mean, but I would have now, probably if you look back, like I would have left mm. immediately. Yeah. You know. I mean, right now I would never. Oh, for sure. I would never. Right. Yeah. At our age, like what is it? it. it's like you know, like a lot of people would probably look at me like, "Oh, she's a user," but like, hey, I, I put my bargain right there. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm yeah. guilty. I yeah. Yeah. You I'm, admit if yeah. it was flawed. Right. For sure. You know. Yeah. And I got what I wanted, and I did not really lack on, you know, because I supported him. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I was not just there to like, you know, I supported for supported him from. Not yeah. just me, but yeah. the people around him and stuff like that. And I like my family never had any money from him. Mm-hmm. So there is that. I always say I have given him more money than my own family, really. Yeah. And, you know, I paid him with my green card and everything. Just going, like, you know, just try to, you know what, let's work this out. And, um... <clears throat> After a, be- a year of being here in America, we got to the point where, like, he would purposely lose his job so that he cannot process my green card, right? So he can't afford my green card, so he has a reason to take all my salary and leave me with nothing and keep me in that loop because he thinks it's like, okay, as long as she's doing caregiving... I don't need her to go anywhere and she don't need to have a green card. Therefore, she cannot run away. Mm, right? Trapment. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm already here. I had I had proven I can survive without green card. I ran away to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> I took the Greyhound bus and that Greyhound bus is like a 24-hour ride all the way to Austin. Damn. And on my journey right there, I got bumped off in El Paso. And this is one of the reasons why I will never go back in El Paso. <laughs> I had a very traumatizing moment there. Mm. Yeah. The immigration just like, you know, start checking. And, you know, like your visa here, when your fiancé visa is only three months, right? Mm-hmm. But you need to get married during those days. And I got married. And I had all my paperwork with me, luckily. And when I ran away, I took it with me. And then they bumped me off. They detained me for eight hours. And it was my first time to be in a detention cell. Damn. And I was like one of those psychopathic people <laughs> that yeah. got detained. And like I would do yoga, I would do praying, I would do <laughs> crying. And then like, yeah, it was just, I didn't know what to do. Damn. Right. And they were like ha- trying to find something so that they can keep me there and kick me out of the country. And I was like, Lord, if I no longer have a purpose here, here in America, I get it. You yeah. know, at least I was able to be here. And I tried. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot further than a lot of folks. Yeah. And it's like after eight hours, they like send me off and stuff. And I made it to Austin after 34 hours. So almost two days, huh? Yeah. And it was crazy. So when you got to Austin, you kind of like get a job, settle. Mm-hmm. I tried to like, you know, like settle and stuff. And then um, me and my ex, we kind of like, he's like, you know what? If you come here, we'll be room- roommates. You know, it would be better than crashing someone's couch. Uh-huh. And if you pay me this certain amount of money, I would be able to... <clears throat> you know, go with you to your green card um, interview and stuff like that, right? So I'm like, okay, so I went back. Damn. I went back to Phoenix. And then I save and save and save and finally process my green card. And then the administration at that time was just turning, right? It's all new. 
everyone was rushing on their green card. Everyone that did not process their green card was processing. Yeah. So my green card was delayed for three years. <laughs> Three-year delay? Yeah. So it's like, this is also when I told you earlier, like, you know, the salt and sugar applied. Mm -hmm. Because if I had processed it right away, I would have actually just have two-year green card. And then I need to reprocess it and then to have a 10-year green card. By me sacrificing those times of not having a green card and finally have it after three years, the USAIS granted me with 10, ten years. So I did not need to like redo the green card over again. Mm -hmm. So Dang. that's yeah, that's actually good. You know, that's yeah. so like I always like I always say that like there's always reason why this certain moment in our life, like now, happens because there is a purpose for it in the future yeah. and then by then you would realize i'm actually having ghost bumps <laughs> you would realize that oh wow that's if what that, that did was not, for yeah if mm -hmm. that did not happen then i would have not been here right mm -hmm. it's more like um you know the apple guy the steve um steve jobs jobs yeah brother jobs yeah like what he did um, wrote about the dots, connecting dots, and hoping that it would connect in the future, right? Yeah. You just got to believe that it would. Yeah, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of, like you do, I do a lot of editing, filming, mm -hmm. and I always ask, I'm like, wow, I don't even know why. I mean, it's I your do asking. this. Yeah, <laughs> you know. That's really the goal. What is my, I know what my goal is. I'm not going to say it out loud, but I was like, you know what? You just have to pretend nobody's listening or watching. Right. Just keep going. I mean, you need to believe in your dream. That I, I'm stubborn. I truly believe in it, but I believe in it in a very like unique way with it. Like I fight with it. Mm. Like, come on, man. Like we're supposed to be like blooming right now. Like, no, no, no. It takes time. It's normal. Yeah. It's normal. There is no it business time, right <laughs> there that just bump out. Yeah. You know, that that's not gonna work. I mean, I had fallow. You know, my YouTube is a failure, too. So. No, I was on there. I was like, dang, you got all these subs. There's a lot of subscribers. No, see. no, no. Really, the, I mean, as long as I've been making it. True. Mm -hmm. There there was a huge, because I, I watched a few of them. Like, boy, she hasn't put things out in right, for years. A while. Because you yeah. get tired. Dude, it's stuff. tiring. It's yeah. a lot of work for free. And then <laughs> it's like my friend. Actually, she just started it on the pandemic, and then now she's monetized, right? Wow, she's already monetized? Uh, yeah, I was yeah, like, good how for her. did that happen? But she told me that, like, oh, it's just, I just did it for fun. Yeah. I just did it for fun. I never really wanted anything else. So on you, I think your gain is, by doing this, you're spreading a lot of people's stories yeah. that actually would inspire people you love to help and there's a lot of people right there that needed to hear someone else's story to be inspired about their life to realize that their life is not as bad as they think yeah and i think your channel is making that happen uh, you know i wanted but, to you hit it that's exactly what i want to do yeah and i know these podcasts i get a lot of feedback mm -hmm. it's too long it's real lengthy and I'm trying to work on that, but it's like, I, you know, I can't turn off what I'm hearing right now. Right. Like, I don't get to have you here every day, uh -huh. you know, and if it's three hours and it's three hours, you know, if it's four, <laughs> it's four. If it's it, 45 minutes, it's 45 minutes. It's like a summarization yeah. of 30 years of my life. And it's a, such a hours. wild story, you know, <laughs> we've already yeah. almost been in a almost hour hour and a half now oh wow and uh oh, already yeah wow and it, this is what i tell people i was like if you're not in the room and i can't expect anybody to be in the room yeah you're not getting what i'm feeling at the moment right so for me to like okay it's a wrap is yeah. well hold on <laughs> <laughs> we've only got to phoenix uh-huh you know and we need to get to utah and where you like, are now yeah, we only got to phoenix and that's six years ago yeah yeah you know, so you spent, well, let's go from Phoenix to here now. Let's, let's we'll get here. You were in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, 
you were there for a while. It looked like you made yourself five years. Five years made your you had a, a nice place. You had a job, mm-hmm. really good community from what I saw. Yeah, they actually had become, I'd say, my my chosen family. Yeah, they had become way more than my family could ever be. Isn't that wild? You meet people like that. Yeah, there's some people where I'm like, oh, if I didn't have you, yeah, I'd be done, dude. Right. I can. There's unfortunately I couldn't say that about like some family mm. my brother i could but my mom and dad is always kind of mm. on the rocks yeah. they're not bad people they just they have their own belief yeah they got their own thing fair yeah. enough yeah but you it seemed like you had a really good community good mm-hmm. family there you were doing sales is that correct some sort of sales like saws and stuff oh yeah we were saw like blades? selling saw blades and then <laughs> um, it's actually a couple like her husband sells saw blades and then um she sells like all the goodies that all this boutique can have like you know okay. fidgets and stuff it's just like oh all fidgets those, and yeah. stuff okay and i'm happy for her she become yeah. really successful on her own field good and for her my experience to that is it showed me how to become a boss yeah. right and it wakes your eyes up open your eyes into this world because in America, when you say, I have a business, a lot of people think, oh, your life must be easy. Yeah. You must be going on vacation everywhere. You're balling. Yeah, here yeah. and there. It's like, no, you're actually working 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. Mm. Every day, you're always thinking. I, I worked with a buddy of mine growing up. His dad had his own company. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, Allison um, Electric. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what he named it. I worked for them for about a year and he, he had built his company from scratch, Mm -hmm. got his contractor's license. And then he hired me, my brother, like all the kids that grew up around his son. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, I'm going to give you guys a job, you know, make good, make really good money for that age. Right. And, but you could see when I wouldn't want to do that. It's a lot of work. Like you said, like he Mm -hmm. has to worry about insurance, make sure everyone gets paid. Because essentially he's feeding you. Yeah. You know, you're counting on him to right. rake in the money. Yeah, exactly. Every day, you know. And it, it it's a lot. Mm. I couldn't worry. That's why I do everything on my own. Because, well, all this stuff is because, one, I can't afford anybody. Right. And two, I'm so particular about how I want things done. Right. But even if I brought somebody on, I would worry so much. I got to I got to make sure they're getting paid. You know? right. I got to make sure they're you okay. Have that pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And business actually a lot of people don't think it, but it has seasons. Right? Yeah. It has a lot of ups it, and downs. Yeah, it has mm-hmm. a lot of seasons. On those seasons that is abundant for you, you need to save up. Yeah. Because the drought is coming. Yeah. And then when that drought <laughs> comes, you will still be able to pay your employees the same thing. Yeah. Right, you you can afford to keep all your employees, so that's the thing. As an empl- employee, you don't really experience that if you're being paid five to six or whatever, mm-hmm. nine to six, whatever. You know, you won't feel that pressure. You know, you yeah. you go to you go to work, you complain. Yeah, you bitch and moan. Yeah, like, they don't they don't pay yeah. me. I do it too. Still this day, <laughs> right. you guys will pay me enough. I get paid all right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And then my (laughs) boss is this and that. Like, you know, you have a lot of complaints. Yeah. But you don't really get the stress Mm -hmm. of being a boss. You need to make sure your employees are good at the same time. Yeah. You need to make sure you pay all your taxes because American government is so into that. Yeah. Yeah. Taking your money. Yeah. You need to make sure everything is written Mm -hmm. and everything and everything is secure. At the same time, you need to worry about your sales. So, instead of just going to the job that you just do, like, you know, this certain kind of, like, for example, you work as a sales, like me, I just sell saw blades the whole day, and that's all I needed to do, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not the one who is shouldering all those hardships to actually survive that business, Mm -hmm. you know? I was just there. I'm just a help. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm a really good worker. But at the end of the day, I did not have the same stress as they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's like the pro, pros and cons of having your own business and working for someone else's business. Yeah. 
But you did it. You did it for five years. Uh, no, no, not entirely. Not entirely. So I was doing caregiving for the for three oh, years. That's right. And then yeah, the and I finally had my green card. So I transitioned from caregiving, a little bit of modeling gigs here and there, mm-hmm. and to I worked for Macy's, right? And until, until the pandemic. Is that the Macy's out here? No, that's oh. the Macy's in um, Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Yeah. Gotcha. And then, <laughs> like this big companies, they just didn't care, right? And pandemic happens. So I was so lucky to have Anne, like, you know, mm-hmm. the, the blades and stuff, like, you know, their, their business. Because she's like, you know what, work for me. If, if it's not because of them, I do not know how I'm going to survive. Yeah. Really. I think a lot of people felt that when it hit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was a weird time in life where I was like, whoa, everybody's out of work. Yeah. Everybody's in this together. Right. And then I looked at like other countries do this or go through this all the time. They did too. You know, and the United States finally, Mm -hmm. it showed up on our door and everybody panicked. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Um. But so you had those jobs and you got through the pandemic? Yeah, I got through the pandemic and they never closed, luckily. Nice. So I was well fed and stuff. And, you know, I have 10.99 on um, my modeling gigs. So that's good because mm-hmm. it helped me to have like, you know, the relief from the government and stuff. So it was nice. actually the most abundant time in my life. Yeah. Like the pandemic was. And then... I was in the dating world and stuff and getting toes around everywhere. Uh-huh. And I met my current boyfriend. And that's like one of the reasons why I moved here in Salt Lake, really. Because yeah. I, 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 was, I was so tired of being out there already. I felt like I'm ready mm-hmm. to finally settle. Yeah. Right? And, and you came here to Salt Lake City. Yeah. Welcome to the Salt Lake City. Welcome where all the white people hang out. <laughs> Is where all the lights are. <laughs> right. I remember the first time I've been to Utah, that was in um, Cedar, I think. Yeah, Cedar is a very, like, southern so part of yeah, it. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I very to, deserty. And I saw a lot of, like, a bunch of white people, and I was like, I belong here. <laughs> Is this this is like a paradise <laughs> to me. Oh, okay. Like, oh, that guy's good looking. So, <laughs> oh man, here they are. These are all right. hiding. Utah. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Utah is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It has its it has, beauty. It has its beauty, and actually voted to be like the second of the best country, uh, not country, um, the best place to live in. I believe it. <clears throat> um, I'm, you know, it's it's funny to make fun of the Mormons and stuff like that, but uh, they do bring a lot of pride mm-hmm. to this state. They like it clean. Mm-hmm. It's kept clean. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll give them that. Right. But they have a lot of weird just laws where I'm I mean, like, we all have our perks. Yeah, I was like, why is I'm, that even a rule? Yeah, I hear but, they can't even have coffee. You know, my my folks are Mormon. I was raised in that mm-hmm. whole. I know everything in and out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, I mean, my dad drunk. He loved Mountain Dew. Oh, there you go. You know, he loved. Everybody loves caffeine. Yeah, you get over it. The coffee thing, I don't understand because coffee is generally pretty healthy for you. Right. It's good antioxidant. Right. But yeah, uh, the soda intake out here in Utah is insane. Yeah, you would see. I like, catch myself drinking more soda now. Like, yeah. I never drank this in California. I just drink you know, water all yeah. the time. Yeah, I try to stick to water, but I love like beer and you know whiskey, what? Get, you know? I will, you know, alcohol here and there. And yeah. You enjoy that. That's yeah. fine. But like, I would suggest get those if you like the soda feel. Get those one that like makes it carbonated. Oh, the soda machine thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, soda stream. I think. Yeah, yeah, they got those things. Mm-hmm. But it's um. So you were coming to Utah when you met your dude. Mm-hmm. I remember and you told me I was you're like oh, I met the guy I'm coming out. I was like yeah, whoa. Yeah, and then Can that's you come when on the you, podcast. Right, right. <laughs> no, I got to spend time with him. I was like, damn. <laughs> like that was like every two weeks, and I was like, oh yeah. my god, I'm getting broke. Yeah. Like all this plane ticket. <laughs> so we're like, oh, let's just stay together, and that where the fun begins. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna speak on it unless mm-hmm. I know you guys had your back and forth there. And... Yeah, I mean, like a relationship 
it's never really perfect as we imagine it to sure. be. Sure, it's a you lot know? of work. It's, like they said, the grass is greener if you water it. Yeah. And relationship is a work. And me and my boyfriend, we talk about this because he has been single for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. I had been single for like a year and a half when we met. I mean, like I still like pedangles sometimes. Like I would still met my ex because for some reason he's like that mm -hmm. one that I let into the deepest part of my heart that I could not get rid of sure. at that time. So, I mean, being single makes you wake up the next day without any worries if you upset someone or if someone is treating you bad or someone is like you know not being truthful to you and stuff like that you know that you have that luxury and the luxury of being free to do whatever you want in your life mm -hmm. right to do whatever you want it's okay like a lot of people I don't know why our culture is like this. Oh, you're single. There must be something wrong with you. It's not more like, oh, you're single. Oh, that's awesome. You can work on yourself. Yeah. Or you have a really good self-control and you have independent from other people because you emotionally can survive even in your loneliest time, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people don't appreciate how good it is to be single, really. Yeah. You get into a relationship now you starting to <clears throat> pick on your partner. Oh, yeah. you're not doing this for me. You're not doing that for me. And you're willing mm -hmm. to do it for someone else. And so you're like, oh, I'm offended, right? Or it would be so hard to communicate. And this is why I felt like being single is actually be better than being with in a relationship or being in the relationship. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not good on letting your personal space being occupied, then you get irritated, you know? Um, when I got here in Salt Lake, I was working for Dellards, you know, selling cologne and stuff. And I do that for like eight hours a day. So I entertain people, I smile to people, and I am introvert, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when I get home... I got used to that point where I get home in Phoenix in my own place. I don't have anybody. It's just the cat that wanted to live with me. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know what? I can just be quiet. I can listen to music or watch movie. And I can just do whatever I want. Now, I come home and my boyfriend is freaking out. Why are you mad at me? Mm. It's like, I'm not mad at you. I'm just tired. I, yeah. And I, this is the way, like, you know, when I'm tired, I'm this way, right? Mm -hmm. I don't say anything. I just sit in the corner and recook myself. But now you need to adjust. Yeah. You need to be able to still have that energy to hang out with your partner at the end of the day. You know, to tell them the, the most exciting sales that you have. Yeah. Rather than just be quiet. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of um, reworking. Mm -hmm. so but it's worth it because when you're with somebody and it's good you know it's it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. i mean i enjoy being in relationships when i was single i was like i it was whatever i think everybody needs to be single and mm -hmm. do that thing and but you get to a point where you're like all right there's got to be a lot more than just me doing everything i've ever wanted to do alone all right yeah yeah it's time to like have some experience with another human being that generally wants to be around you, which is pretty cool. I mean, you know? I guess, I mean, not I guess, because there's my parents, right? They yeah. found each other. They they like what they like and they mm -hmm. understand each other. Um, it's the thing about me and my boyfriend is that um, him and I, we both were single mm -hmm. and we were not like, you know, for a long period of time we were. And then all of a sudden, you are constantly occupied by this person. Yeah. And then we wonder, like, we were good when we were just dating. Mm -hmm. And I was always telling him, it's because you did not see the dark side of me. You know, I don't want to come here in Salt Lake and just fight. 
yeah. right? I wanted to come here in Salt Lake so we can spend time, we can have fun. And at the same time, it's the same way for you. Right. Because every time I come here, you forget about everything else and just spend time with me. Now that we are together, you needed to work, I needed to work. Right. And stuff like that. Like, you know, the vacation becomes your, like, you know, your daily life. And it's, it doesn't feel yeah. like a vacation anymore. Yeah, I, I've been guilty of that in relationships where I forget all my friends, everything I do, everything mm. that makes me happy, hobbies, everything, and it's all about them. Mm. And that's probably the most dangerous thing you can do. Don't get me wrong, it's a good portion of about them. Yeah. But you need to like hang out with your buddy still. And you notice you know? that with me. You're like, oh, let's do a podcast and I'm too scared to get out. Yeah, right. I was like, what do you, what do you, worry? Uh, and you know, I'm not going to say anything, but I, I knew what was going on, but I was like, <sighs> okay, I yeah. get it. But yeah. it's like you're, you're losing who you are. Right. And you're absorbed all your energy and you forget like, hold up. Yeah. I like to meet with people. Right. You know? I want to have my own life. Yeah. You can trust me. I can go mm. sit with so-and-so. It'll be all right. It, it was me, actually. Ah. Oh, okay. Like I, oh, okay, I had okay. the biggest trust issue uh, right it's like i i kind of like okay well i give up everything i had back home everything right sure. to be here so i made sure of it that i would watch everything that there is no threat mm. you know against me on that one and i become possessive i become toxic and stuff gotcha yeah and I, I thought I was past that, right? I, I thought I was, oh, okay, I'm over that. I'm already an adult. I'm ready for a relationship. You know, I had spent time with myself. I mm -hmm. wanted to, like, you know, live a life that I could share it with someone. The thing is, it's also an adjustment because someone you choose doesn't always have the same hobby as you. Yeah. Right? Or maybe they're done with that kind of hobby and they've done it already in their life and they don't want to continue that. Yeah. Right? So you need to have a certain kind of amount that you are still able to trust the relationship at the same time go out there and spend time with yourself and other people yeah. because that's healthy yeah you know don't just put someone in the pedestal and that's what i did mm -hmm. i put him in the center of my life and i watch every step that he did oh okay right so that suffocated my partner and it was not like you know yeah, it's not healthy. It's not healthy. Yeah. And then now... That's when they go, all right, I'm going to start calling so-and-so and I'm going to go on dates and, and just forget this. Or like, oh, yeah. I'm just, you know what? I'm going to spend with uh, time with my friends and stuff, yeah. right? So It's a lot of like, okay, all right, mm -hmm. I'm going to get you back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when, when I come back here, it was actually really amazing because we had... Uh, part of our life where it was the darkest where I move out you know I tried to move out and then we realized that we really do care for each other sure right so when I come back we become an adult and it was not hard we still fight sure you know, yeah right? yeah I'm fighting I, I worked with a buddy of mine he's like you know what man I love my girl once in a while you guys need to fight yeah you yeah. need to have a good fight <laughs> right and you let it all out and then you're good right i was like you're you're funny fool yeah <laughs> that's the thing because he grew up to this um italian family where they would shout on each other and after a few minutes they're okay yes oh my bad right yeah, yeah, yeah. i grew up into a parent that never fought in front of us mm, same. so i did not know how to handle that yeah. you know that situation i i was like okay well what can i do you know, if I go quiet, then then like, oh, why are you being quiet? And then if I do this, it's like, I don't know what to do, right? Yeah. You know, a healthy relationship fights. And a healthy relationship, you need to say something that you don't like. You need to, to be more, what's this, open. And you mm -hmm. need to communicate. And a communication with someone you love, most especially in the very beginning of relationship, it's quite hard because you're afraid to hurt this, their feelings, yeah. right? If we can just tell, hey, I don't like this wolf thing that you are doing, mm -hmm. you know, change it for me, right? Like, yeah. you know, not, not totally change it because you don't want to change a person. You need to be there for that person for the way they are, yeah. right? 
And if you don't like it, then zoom out. Like, yeah, yeah get out uh, of their life. Yeah, or just accept that thing. That one thing is not going to change. Yeah, and, and you're just like, okay, that's just yeah. how he is. Is yeah, this or how she is? Is this yeah. something I can live with sure. or live, like you know, or not really? Yeah. Like you know, because at that point you're like, well, there is no perfect right there. Yeah. Pick your poison. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, it's really true. There's nothing 100 percent perfect. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, that's what we've been doing. We figure out that if we do the relationship into a free thing where he can be who he wants to be and I can have a life mm -hmm. that I can do whatever I want without worries, then it works. And yeah. so far right now, it's working. And this is why I made it here because I'm no longer that really uptight person. Right? Nice. It's well, funny. I appreciate that. <laughs> I know it can be overwhelming when some random fool on Instagram, hey, do you want to come on my podcast? <laughs> I know. Uh, I mean, like, I I've been the, watching. Who her. are you, fool? <laughs> you know why? Why would I want to come? I totally get where you're coming from. Why the constant like, no, 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 no. I get it. Was, it. it was my personal problem. It's not. Yeah, it's nothing enough. about you. Oh, okay, okay. Because you know me, I'm like one of the most not brave but dumb <laughs> kind of thing. You're in my you're, uh, you're very inspirational. You know, when we talked on the phone mm. a long time ago. Just the way you put, articulate things and have your outlook on it. It's like, you know, this this person, this individual needs to come and share this. All right. It, you, you have a story and that's why I love doing what I do and meeting people that I meet. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a thing for me. It just makes me go, whoa. Yeah. You know, it's just, we're, we all have this weird, like, just trail in life that makes zero sense mm -hmm. and then when we meet and we talk about it you go like you said earlier you're like oh that's why yeah. that happened that's yeah. why i went through that that's why xyz you know yeah that's why this has been postponed for so long because yeah, you had because something I going had on something going yeah. on it's like i'm not afraid of strangers you i know? would go out with strangers yeah. Well, I'm, all I'm my friends time. were strangers at one point. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and there is that time where, like, you know, I was renewing my passport in L.A., right? Yeah. And I think for some people that was scary for them. But for me, it was like, oh, okay. Because yeah. it's like I don't have any more paperwork at that time. They took my yeah. passport. So I needed to take the bus coming back to Phoenix. Mm. So it was like 9 p.m., p.m. at night and I was walking downtown Ange Los Angeles and all the way to the bus uh, um, station yeah. and then on the way there is actually Skid Row mm -hmm. and I was like filming and stuff and I was just jolly jolly with like my office outfit on and I was like where am I? <laughs> like, hold up is this the scene is this the scene to the walking dead right where are you guys at are you guys gonna pop out of the bushes <laughs> and it's yeah, like it's, you know there's this guy down like there calling me and it's like hey i was like hi and i was like just passing by and i'm that like you know it would probably get me killed if i'm not careful yeah. but at that time i was not even thinking about it sure like i'm just i have a free soul i would say yeah. You know, I'm not afraid to experience life. Yeah, you do. You do a lot of interesting stuff on your YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know, the last one you did, I was like, okay, well, all right, just walking and cooking a steak. Right. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> would I do that? No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would go on a hike for sure, but it's cool. You brought everything. And then I know I gave you some feedback. I'm like, I would like to hear you talk. Mm -hmm. But then, you know what? I regret saying that because I've been watching a lot of stuff on YouTube. Where it's simply, it's cooking, right. it's street food and stuff like that. There's all you hear is the chef cutting. Mm -hmm. There's no talking. There's no music. Yeah. I was like, now I get why she did that. Like yeah. you said, you know, you come back to it. It's like it really does pull you in. Mm -hmm. Like you really stay more focused in on the simplicity yeah. of what you're watching. Exactly. And I've you been know? following two of. Um, this person that my favorite it's like one of them is drew sims mm -hmm. and the other one is like some like hulk like something like that but he's from europe 
And Drusim is from here. He's the one who lives in his Jeep. Oh. And I was just like, I would look at their footage. So it's more like the, the footage speak for itself kind of thing. And gotcha. I wanted to be in that um, level. I'm yeah. not there yet, but I'm working on it. Like, you yeah. know, there's still, you know how it is with editing, post-production. And Man, stuff like post that. is tough. It's yeah. like, how do I want to manipulate this without being too corny? Yeah. But being like, wow, right. it's tough. Yeah. I totally get it. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you do, you're really good at it. I've watched, you know, your editing and I've given you like feedback. Mm. Well, where you're headed with it, I really it, do enjoy it. Mm, it's thank you. very simple. The way you cut from one scene to the next, yeah. very good. Yeah. I struggle with B roll and, you know, yeah. long cuts. Cause I do a count, I'm like, okay, cut. And yeah. it's like, okay, now I got to match the music. And it's like, God, dude, right. this takes forever. There is this <laughs> scene in um, my, I think it was like a few weeks ago where I uploaded the one with me and my ex, uh, not ex, my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. That we went to the lava tube. And it was actually a combination of three take. Like, you know, a three different cuts. Yeah. Oh, three take is like a three different video mm -hmm. that you kind of like do kind of the same way, but it was taken in single camera. So I needed to go back up and then go down again mm -hmm. and stuff. And I was able to patch it all together and it, it went good. And I was yeah. like, wow, okay. Yeah, it, it's fun. You start to become very, I do it more than I ever have done it where I, I'm, Generally, I call myself a pretty creative person. Like, mm -hmm. this is all I mean, like, me yeah. thought up. I mean, you started you know? with where, like, um, just in the living room kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Until you get to have your own studio, which is amazing. Yeah, I started with my phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anybody wants to get into filming, start with your phone. Mm -hmm. It's the safest, cheapest way. And I did my last vlog when I was in Hawaii. And I was like, it's no more phone. Mm -hmm. The quality needs to be better. I have the camera to do it. Right. Um, but that, it took me a while to be like not intimidated of that camera. Right. Because those things are like. Complicated. I was like, what, dude? I don't know what ISO. <laughs> what, two frame rates? Like, <laughs> right. Where do I sh shoot the time lapse? You exactly. have to set it up completely different. It's like, man, the phone would just do it. I almost went back to the phone. Right. I was like, no, 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 dude. If you go back to the phone, you're just going to be the phone guy and yeah. your quality is going to be trash and no one's going to watch it. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> mine is just shoot from my phone right now. I just did not have the, I mean, the inspiration. No, no, no. It's very tricky. Cameras is very tricky. I would say yeah. like, it's not like, the, okay, you set it on 4k 60 uh -huh. and it would record auto. Yeah. Like, you know, and then if you do the camera, you need to like find your proper lighting, your, just like what you said, ISO, your frame rate and everything. It was just like, ah, oh, there's too much for me. Yeah. I did that before though. Yeah. You know, I used to have my Canon when I go exploring. Yeah. That camera is a nice camera. Mm -hmm. That Canon that you have. I'm probably going to get that one next. I just love the crispness. It does not um, record 4K though. Oh. Uh. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I think it's only 1080. 1080p ain't bad, but mm -hmm. you can tell when someone hit 4K, you're like, ooh, yeah, it's a little sharper. Right, but it's clearer. It's better to look at in your 85 mm -hmm. because now we're like going to like a hundred inches TVs. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a whole. It's 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 fun. It's fun learning it. I enjoy it. I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit better. Just I mean, that's a good bit. thing because that's like, you know, bursting out of your bubble and growth, really. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, I get out of the camera. I go to more more complicated one and you're growing. Yeah. Yeah. You're learning new skills and stuff. It's not just like press the button and it would record for you. Mm -hmm. It's more like, okay, this is a skill that you can actually um, use for the farther um, project that you're going to yeah. do and stuff. Yeah, I eventually want to make a music video for this uh, mm -hmm. set I did. Mm -hmm. I, did uh, I made a mix. I was like, this would be a funny like music video to do. <laughs> right. So I've Plus, been, you create your own music, yeah. which is amazing. I do a lot of stuff. It, it's weird. I dip into a lot of stuff because I'm waiting to see which one hits. Mm. You know? I would love for this one to hit because this is my favorite, but... 
I also have to be realistic of how many podcasts there are. Mm -hmm. And this may never hit, you know, but mm -hmm. it something else could the vlogging could hit. The mm -hmm. DJ mixes could right, hit. Yeah. Um so I can't isolate myself to one thing right now. Plus it's know. actually like, you know, motivating you to do it. Keeps you very more. creative. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get stuck. And I think about that too, is like if I was just doing podcasts, then I would just be doing Podcast podcasting. Forever. Forever. Yeah. And that that gets old. Yeah, I have to do so many things because I get bored. Like, mm -hmm. and then I want to challenge myself in a different way. All right, I'll go get good at that. All right, All right. I'll come back to this. Yeah, it, uh, that's the way I work. It would be good too because, like, you know, you'll be able ha to have all these branches and stuff. Right, and somebody may or may not be like, "Hey, I want, I need you to do this for me." Okay, mm -hmm. I could do that. Exactly. Yeah, and it's another gig. Yeah, you need to do voiceovers for something. Come on over. Mm -hmm. Use my mic. I'll I'll edit it for you. Right. You know. Yeah. So it opens the doors. I'm just waiting for people to knock. I think we'll eventually. <laughs> but let's take. It you takes know, time. If it did not, at least it would be a, um, almost like a folder of the memories that you had interacted with people. Right. You that know? too, and I do it for a lot of. This I do for the individual because mm. I've always. Tell people, you know, when you get somebody who gives you a chance to talk about yourself, mm -hmm. you're, you're a pretty amazing person. And that doesn't happen too much anymore. I, I'm you know? feeling like you're probably becoming more of a therapist now. <laughs> <laughs> because you're hearing all this kind of like, you know, stories been, and you're going to patch that oh, le lesson from this and lesson from that. Uh, you know, I've been very fortunate for it. Yeah. And it's really weird because I'm an extremely shy person, mm -hmm. and but I do this because it, there's this you people like you and people that I've had previous. Mm -hmm. The stories are like, how how are you not writing a book or right. you know it's phenomenal what you went through to be where you're at now. I mean, we can all it's write wild. a book. We really right. could, you know, because each person is a book itself. Yeah, yeah, we have a very unique we, uh, some of us has similarities of our journey but it's like our fingerprint right yeah. it's always different like you know yeah. your experience might have some you know of mine similar to mine yeah. but it's different and it's unique on its own and yeah. that's the beauty of our existence here yeah 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 no one has the exact same life exactly so wild right mm-hmm I mean, whoever's doing the programming, they got that part right. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. It's you know? like, good job on like fabricating those. Yeah, good job on like making it not the same for everybody. Similarities, yeah. but yeah. never exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I'll I tweak this a little bit right yeah. here. So it's not Sean's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make him turn left instead of right this time. <laughs> oh, baby. Right. Good job, Sean. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a wild ride. Well, thank you so much for coming on here. I of really appreciate course. it. I'm glad I got to finally meet you after mm -hmm. like fucking I 10 felt years. like <laughs> I know you for a long period of time. Yeah. I feel like I seen you like grow and just go through bad hardships. Just I'm like, man, I don't know what else I can do or say, you know, mm -hmm. especially at that one point where you're like, I was like, oh, you, you got to go this way. You got to do that. You're like, oh, I'm going to try it. I'm like, oh, you sure? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, my God. You like, did it. I, I know, I'm like, I know you're trying to, you know. No, that's all right, go ahead. Um, I, I'm crazy like that, you know. Uh -huh. I'm very stubborn, and I have this saying that if you're going to jump off the cliff, I would tell you that you're probably going to get hurt, or you're probably going to die, or whatever. But mm -hmm. something is bad is going to happen for you. But if you want to do it anyway, go for it. Mm. right because i want people to be like that with me if i want to do something in my life don't cut it off because you are kind of removing that experience from me if i would just follow what other people will do i would not be here right now right mm. because i would be so sheltered and i would never ever experience that kind of pain personally and like you know like on me it's mm. not just like pain from hearing it from other people it's actually experiencing life on my own 
Right. Fair enough. Yeah. Because so interesting. That's a really good way to look at it, honestly. Mm -hmm. I never thought of that. Yeah. Because if we say, oh, don't do that because you you might get hurt. Maybe that person needed to be hurt, hurt. so yeah. that they can get tough and you know, they get they, they get to be a better person. So there is that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. I told a friend that recently. Mm -hmm. um, the one I was helping financially. I was like, if you go back to so-and-so, I can't help you financially. Right. I could still be your friend if you needed something. Mm -hmm. But I had a that was hard for me to do because she has kids. I'm like, Ugh, yeah, you know, your kids. Yeah. Kids shouldn't be seeing that. And then I, when I told her that, she's like, what's the problem with me dating so-and-so? I was like, did you not he hear is, what I said? Yeah. I said I can't help you financially anymore. That has gone to him now. Yeah. That's between you two. Mm -hmm. You needed help for a moment. But I can't sit here and say I agree with you being a punching bag for the rest of your life. But I hope you learn from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll be here if you need to talk it out. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm not going to give you money anymore. Mm -hmm. That doesn't do any good. And uh, yeah. But I, I, like you said, it's probably what she has to figure yeah, she out. She needs to go through with that. Yeah. Because, Unfortunately. You know, I'm so good on telling people what to do, like telling them like a lot of advices, yeah. but it's so hard to do it myself. Oh, trust me. Yeah. I t I'm, I'm like that all the time. Um, yeah. And people generally take it. They do pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then I go, fool, you wouldn't even do that. <laughs> you're such a, you're such a, you're such a fibber. Right. But most of the time it, when I, my thing now, I, I tell people and we'll, we'll wrap this up soon. I tell people if they're going through a hard time, whatever that hard time is, I say, all right, say that thing that's bothering you out loud and tell me if that sounds like a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like this girl who's dating a guy who's beating her up pretty much. Mm -hmm. I said, say that out loud. Yeah. My, my man beats me up mm -hmm. every day. I have mm -hmm. bruises. Right. I'm like, so what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't sound too good, does it? Right. And they go, yeah is okay. it worth it is it worth it yeah so that's my new thing the and thing it seems to be pretty she needs to have that thought in her own yeah. right she needs to be able to think is this what i really want yeah. because when you don't have that kind of mentality then you're going to be doomed yeah. you know because you need to think for yourself you know you need to be able to like love yourself this is what they said self-care and this is what they said love yourself because you need to be able to think like what is this for me right yeah. is this what i want for the rest of it yeah you know yeah i hope i, I just hope i hope yeah. i hope she gathers herself and moves on from that and i do i we'll do see. hope she hear this and hear like the first part of my relationship and she would realize that hey it's better Life, this yeah. is not just life. Well, I'm going to send it to her and I'm going to see, see? Yeah. You can do it just fine. Right. I mean, like, yeah. I had survived without my ex-husband and be able to sustain myself. Yeah. Yeah, you did it. And I met a lot of beautiful people after that. And I had a lot of heartbreak, too. So it's yeah. part of life. It, 100%. Yeah. Well, before we go, I want to do, do you like movies? Mm-hmm. Are you good at movie trivia? Not so much. All right. Pick an, pick an era of movies. What, like the 90s, 2000s, and 80s? Let's do the modern movies. Modern movies. Okay. Modern movies. And you do this and you get a prize if you get it right. Okay. All right. You want more in the 2000s? Sure. Okay. Can I choose a genre? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. Ooh. I don't know much about sci-fi. Sci-fi. It's my favorite. Oh, okay. Sci-fi. We'll go to Mm, okay, okay. You got to remember too, I grew up without television for 17 years. Yeah. <laughs> Just nice. guitar. Let's see. Um, 
All right, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the premise and see if you can get this. Okay. Let's see about this movie. Um, they land on a unknown planet, mm-hmm. and only one guy has special vision where he can see these animals that are trying to kill them. Oh, wow. Well, that's a tough one. I can keep, keep giving you more clues. Okay. The main actor has nine movies recently. Okay. Of the same uh, franchise. They have nine at the moment. Is this the Alien movies? No, not the Alien movies. I can keep giving me more clues. <laughs> is this a movie? Uh, this is a movie, right? Yes. Um, it's not going to be the Star Trek no, I believe this movie's later, like nineties ish. Mm. I'm afraid I did not see that. Okay, so the main actor, he, uh, he's in a car, the car movies, and there's nine of them. Okay, so the Fast and the Furious. Okay, right. who's that? Who's the main guy? What's his name? The actor. Um, Ben Diesel. Okay, now that you have his name. Uh-huh. The sci-fi movie he is, he has to wear special goggles. Yeah, yeah. I think I've watched this. I don't yeah. know the, <laughs> the ah. title. <laughs> like, it's like a, um, is this like almost like a witch hand? No. They land on some planet and these things have. And there's like a, a girl and a boy right there, right? I think. Mm, there's like a group of people. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's called Pitch Black. Oh, um, Okay, well, yeah. I did all of it. <laughs> Good enough. Right. Good enough. But hey, you'll still, you still get the prize. That is a bundle of stickers. Oh, um, I will add it could... to my um thing because like this thing, I, I still have it. So we've been oh, talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got right that there. little one. I had that Japanese thingy right here, but it fell off. Oh, I yeah, still have that those. thing. Right got more of those. Well, Diana, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. this. Oh, maybe we can come back and do another one and yeah, talk more about yeah. uh, where you're at now and, mm-hmm. you know, see where you want to go in the future. Right. Maybe. But thank you so much. It's fun to finally talk to you. Thank you so much for yeah, having me. Of course. All right, folks, that is it. appreciate you guys watching. Take care of yourselves and take care of others. Peace. <laughs>